So we've long known that there was a link between stress and disease, but what wasn't clear is whether or not the link was independent of other factors. For example, the link between stress and atherosclerotic disease was at first thought to be maybe associated with increased uh, health uh, behaviors that are uh, putting people at increased risk for cardiovascular disease events, for example, smoking or poor eating. But it turns out that that doesn't explain that risk. And so we were interested in using uh, multimodality imaging to better understand the risk between stress and cardiovascular disease. The way we did that was to use advanced imaging with PET-MR and PET-CT to image the brain as well as the bone marrow and the atherosclerotic milieu to try to understand the mechanism linking stress and cardiovascular disease. With the brain imaging, we were able to measure the amount of activity in the amygdala, a very important portion of the brain that is responsive to stress. For the bone marrow and the arterial wall, we looked at the link between the inflammatory system with the inflammatory cell production in the bone marrow and arterial inflammation. And in 293 patients, we were able to then over time uh, assess for the development of cardiovascular disease events. What we found was that amygdalar activity very nicely predicted the development of cardiovascular disease events over the five years of follow-up. In particular, we were able to show that amygdalar activity and upregulation of amygdalar activation was linked to increased bone marrow production as well as increase in arterial inflammation. And through mediation analysis, we were able to demonstrate that in series, the amygdala, bone marrow, and arterial inflammation colluded to increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. What do we hope to accomplish going down is to better understand the system. We want to ask, are there other ways that we can manipulate that system? Are there ways that we can reduce the development of arterial inflammation that is promoted by stress? And could that ultimately lead to a reduction in cardiovascular disease events?